Cuba is unique in its law 81 of the environment is a requirement to use the principles of environmental economics in decision making. Environmental economics means you're putting an economic value on the natural ecosystem, something that here in this country, we, we never did until recently. The environment was free, free to dump your waste into, free to extract resources from. And so the idea is to make better decisions by including a value for the environment. Cuban coral reefs are much healthier than the rest of the Caribbean. Some of the reefs that I've seen along the Cuba's southern coast are healthier than the reefs that I remember in 1974 from the Florida Keys. It's incredible. It's like a living time machine, as I've called it. But some other reefs do show signs of degradation. They show signs of stress, which means they're covered with algae. Some of the corals are dying. We believe that's an effect of overfishing, but we still need to do research to understand that. But we know we're in a race to, not just in Cuba, but worldwide to rescue corals. Since 1970, we have lost 50% of the corals in the Caribbean. It's tragic. And this same percent is about the same percentage worldwide. One category is local impacts. The other is global impacts. Of course, we have global warming. Corals are sensitive to hot water. We have acidification. The oceans are becoming more acid. That's a result of carbon dioxide mixing with seawater and the structure of coral reefs is calcium carbonate. So they are literally dissolving into the sea. On the other hand, at the local level, in, in the United States, in other Caribbean countries, the use of fertilizer, industrial farming, that nutrient, those nutrients do exactly the same thing in the water that they do on crops or uh, on grass. They promote the growth of plants and algae, and that algae can smother the reef and kill it. And we've seen that around the world. But in Cuba, the corals are still very healthy, some of them incredibly healthy. The coral reefs that I fell in love with as a teenager in the Florida Keys are 90% dead. So Cuba can be a living laboratory for us to understand why these corals are so healthy and to learn from them uh, to restore corals elsewhere, but also to help protect Cuba's corals and keep them healthy. Jardines de la Arena is one of the best examples. It's not the only example. It really points to the fact that this story in Cuba is complex. Part of it is, as people have described it, an accident of history. It just happens that Cuba has developed much differently than the rest of the world. Cuba has protected 25% of its waters in marine protected areas, many of which you're not allowed to fish in. And Jardines de la Arena is an example of that. One of the best examples is a project in Cocodrilo, in the southern part of Isla de la Juventud, and the project is called Red Alerta. What we're trying to do is find environmentally and economically sustainable alternatives for the community and provide economic incentive for them to protect their corals. One of those uh, alternatives is ecotourism, bringing people in to enjoy the natural environment and uh, providing economic incentive to uh, protect the environment. If Cuba follows the lead of the rest of the Caribbean, including the United States, um, they're gonna end up with the same result. They have to learn the lessons of history 
I think many scientists in Cuba understand that. Um, at the same time, there's great pressure for support of the Cuban economy. And one of the best ways uh, to achieve that is through mass tourism, through industrial farming. Um, these have great dangers for Cuba's environment, especially coral reefs. We have a very difficult situation with our administration right now um, and Trump's clearly anti-Cuba stance. Fortunately, the work that we do falls under a license that hasn't been affected, which is professional research. And that's the good news. Uh, the bad news is that it's harder for us to raise money. Many of the foundations, given the political climate, are afraid to invest in Cuba. The Cuban government has been very cautious under these conditions of, of a Trump administration. So it's been very hard for us to push projects forward during this time. And it becomes a circular problem because if we can't demonstrate results, we won't get additional funding from the foundations. And that's exactly what's happening right now. Conservation is about helping communities solve problems in their communities. Um, it's something that we forget about, but it's, it's so important. Conservation is about people. And that's something that I feel optimistic that in Cuba, we have a lot of communities where people really want to do something. They want change. There are great ideas and we're just there to support them. Mm -hmm.